reading. This is a fireplace. Mother makes most boringest movie ever for future spoiled child. Ah, here's Katie again. The movie wants to tell this story parallel to the first paranormal activity, only it's strange that Katie never once mentions what's happening to her sister and new family or anything in the first one. I'm the evil step aunt. Foreshadowing. Whoa, that baby turning into a one-year-old escalated quickly. I guess they got tired of recording Things Around the House Part 2, The Quickening. Where's Mika? He's brutally tired from being annoying. As far as I know, this room was not touched. Demon f***s up the whole house except the nursery. Because when you're about to kidnap a child, you need to show respect for his or her living quarters. Here's where the movie's best idea gets wasted. Cameras are everywhere, but only a couple of them will actually capture anything worthwhile in this movie. Even the slightest glimpse of something from some of these worthless cameras would make it worthwhile. But as you will soon see, he will be desperately trying to find entertainment where none exists. Some people think that's a demon being scary. Not me. I think the demon is misunderstood. That's just the demon being hilarious. Yo lo estoy protegiendo. The Spanish nanny knows the place is haunted cliche. <laughs> my daughter's screaming. Better run to wherever she is carrying my camera. There's a stench a lot of. Ha ha, because she's Spanish, right? That's racist. It's so quiet. I'm like, there's nobody here. It's fantastic. Where's your two-year-old, though? You don't want to smash me? I kind of want you to smash me. Dude's chronicling of everything will not include this smashing. Let me release the Kraken. Dude, release the Kraken penis jokes are not only terrible, they're also super passe. Good job being super passe. For some reason, Aunt Katie is the one to wake up and comfort the baby, not either of the baby's parents. Movie waits 14 minutes to tell you it's a prequel and not a sequel, which, if I'm honest, wiped away a good dozen or so sins that I'd written already. Kind of fourth century, but they you trashed our whole house. See that thing in the corner? Yeah. Looks like a motion detector. That's a camera. We're watching you! It wasn't until the first paranormal activity was released that these assholes discovered they had freaky found footage that actually predated that movie's footage. I don't know, I, I get this feeling. Like when we were little. What? Never mind. We don't want to reveal anything that would spoil the surprises of Paranormal Activity 3. This footage was filmed before the first movie's events. So how did the powers that be who found the footage deem Katie and Micah's story more worthy of being the first one told than this footage? Why don't you just admit you're capitalizing on this real family's pain by turning out sequels to their grisly murders? This franchise is like the Where's Waldo of horror movies. Tons of harmless security footage designed to make you hunt and peck for any wisp of movement or ghost activity. F**k Waldo. I don't know why this family needs a nanny. The mom doesn't appear to work, and why would she? Her husband owns a ton of Burger Kings. What does she do that she needs a nanny to help out with the kid? Movie cuts to black to emphasize the nothingness. God, this pool cleaner thing was out last night, on night two. Do these people just never swim and leave the pool cleaner bot on 24-7? How dirty did that shit get since yesterday? Movie repeats the exact same sequence from earlier of various security cameras capturing nothing, because repetition equals plot. This pool doesn't have dozens of dead cartel members who wrong Gustavo Fring floating in it. Here we go again. These people are horrible parents to both dogs and humans. 32 seconds of nothing happening in the kids' room except for some noises you have to be wearing headphones to even hear. We've done a lot of these demon movies. I wonder what these assholes do when they're plotting to steal kids or possess people. They show up, they knock some things around, and then they get tired. There's some sort of process they have to go through before they can accomplish their goals. You have to be really patient when you're a bloodthirsty demon from the lower bowels of hell. Movie is really trying my patience with this sh Sickening thud is the sound of fury, signifying nothing. Wait, why didn't we get to see this camera's viewpoint during the loud noise sh you clearly had this angle before and after it. So if people stitching together this found footage left that out for some reason, then they are manipulative dicks, and I can no longer trust this movie. Dicks? Didn't she already pray away the bad spirits? If that shit didn't work earlier, why does she think it's going to now? Does she really mean it this time? Martine is now getting fired for burning incense. And whatever. Fire whoever you like. She's not an important person. But why can't she somehow communicate to Daniel and Christy to look at the security tapes and at least see that something weird is happening at the house? I guess this kid can see whatever demonic force is in the house. It's probably playing peekaboo with him or doing the magic thumb trick. I would never accuse a father of getting all Paris Hilton sex tape with his daughter. But this father is getting all Paris Hilton sex tape with his daughter. Cleanest pool ever! Why don't we ever see the kid's room when whatever makes him cry happens? In the first movie, even though the demon's actions didn't make any sense, at least we saw something. This movie is all about going out of its way to not show you anything. Sounds can be scary, sure, but when there are six cameras throughout the house that capture neither Jack nor shit, it's frustrating as hell. Let this be a lesson to all you new parents. Every time your baby cries, it might be a demon. We find out later that was a bird. Why just this one bird, and not all the birds? Why does the dumbest bird have the keenest demon detection? Don't worry, that's just the demon pretending to be a truck driver playing on a CB radio. But much like stealing kids or possessing Katie, it takes a long time for a demon to get a commercial driver's license, so fantasy will have to do until then. 32 minutes in, legitimately considering bailing on this Sins video and letting Chris finish the rest on his own. F*** this f***ing repetitive bullshit, man. Demon is careless with cookware. Demon is careless with cookware. What are you doing back out here? Whoa, 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 this contraption was found outside the pool after you put it inside the pool, and you're just bemused by that? That is clear evidence of an intruder and foul play, man. What the f***? 
I'm definitely getting one of these. And that's the origin story of Mika's obsession with cameras. You no, know, I just don't talk about this stuff anymore. What so. stuff? Demon hunting backstory is obscured by cleavage. Movie is so clearly conditioning you that you probably aren't anywhere near as mad about this as I am. Demon arson. Of course, Allie's having a romantic hot tub rendezvous with her boyfriend when this happens, so that the dad has someone to blame this stupid sh** off. Married couple bicker about the pot falling incident, instead of the fire started while your daughter was in the hot tub with some boy incident, which honestly is f***ed up. Get your priorities straight, people. This is something you didn't know. Paranormal phenomena hate it when you have a clean pool. I just had to go to the bathroom, and honestly, I didn't even pause the movie, and yet somehow, I missed nothing. What is it about the hours of 3am that make this demon come out? This mother is leaving the bar way too late. It's time to impose a curfew seance. You guys. There's something we need to see. You'd better take a look at this cliche. You know, we can't just let this affect us that much. If we do that, the terrorists win. Was this still funny even in 2006? Also, why is this dickhead still shooting video of random nonsense like this? Ah! Prankster Demon continues his wacky antics because one day he'll have a YouTube channel everyone can enjoy. Demon diversifies its scare portfolio by using shadow puppets. Ah! Huh! Felt like a shadow creeping on me. Teenage daughter going to bed thinks nothing of the wide open front door. Movie is a dick to storytelling. Demon realizes it left the oven on back in hell and decides to quit baby snatching for the night. These parents are so loving they don't even put child protective installations on their basement doorknobs. The six minutes cut out of this security footage are not important at all. How did this asshole get back in the crib? Did the demon come back and lift him back in? What kind of f***ed up demon is this? And I don't want to hear any more of this haunted house crap, okay? Earlier, when you wanted to see what the hell was going on with the pool cleaner, you consulted your expensive security system. Now, with video proof of all sorts of shit, you decide to play asshole dad and are not the least bit curious about what happened at all. That it's probably not a ghost, it's probably something else, and it's possibly a demon. The character goes and does research that has all the answers for the weird f***ed up shit happening cliche. And hmm. demons are not human, they're just, like, evil. Well, you gotta admit, they have a keen sense of humor. Despite being 100% evil. I mean, he got you good with that locking you out of the house thing a minute ago. We'll follow the defaulter and his or her brood until its soul of an infant is collected. Ah, the internet. The cause of and solution to all of life's problems. Okay, so this is the freakiest thing ever and it happened to me last night. Finally, the curious girl consults the security footage. Also, footage is the widescreen edition, complete with the black bars at the top and bottom of the screen, which are normal. Yeah. Wind blows the door closed. Dad. Thank you. God damn it. It's happened to There's me a million no times. Wind. I'm sure it's happened to you a million times. Got you completely locked out of the house and everything, too, I bet. Also, Curious Girl decides not to look at any of the other footage all that night, basically considering the door closing as the only footage worthy of review. Night 17. I gave up carrying on night 2, FYI. I think I just heard something coming from downstairs. So naturally, my first move was to turn on a video camera. <laughs> Girl who hears a noise like this upon turning a doorknob continues with her plan to open said door. Horror vlogging. Family German Shepherd nowhere to be found during this particular strange noises in the house scene. Demon risks waking up the entire house by playing with the is this guy's deal? Whatever happened to us when we were little, I think it's starting again. I don't want to talk about this, Christy. At least not until the next movie, which will actually be the first movie. But whatever. I'm only here for a paycheck. You want to know what I remember? I remember you crying all the time. This is good personal shit to get on camera right now. You need to leave this alone. So ignore the creepy shit and it goes away. Good advice. Also, you basically completely ignore this advice when the creepy shit starts happening to you. Actually, you ignore this whole entire story in the first movie. Probably just the wind. Also, just forget about it, and I'm sure it will never happen again. No need to show anybody this footage because Katie said to leave it alone. <laughs> Family does not immediately move out right the f now. <laughs> Scene punctuating teapot. What if Christy's great grandmother made a deal with a demon so she could get rich? And Hunter is the first male to be born on Christy's side since at least the 1930s. Okay, you want me to believe that since the great grandmother, all the kids born on that side were female? Fine. That's possible, but unlikely. But how does that person making the bargain actually give up anything when it waits until the great-grandchildren have a son? That means great-grandmother made a bargain and never had to pay for it. Don't tell me that shit isn't coincidence. Clearly you mean, don't tell me that shit is coincidence. The sin is for no one in the crew or editing department noticing your mistake. Night 19. The natives have accepted me as one of their own. They show no desire whatsoever to try and escape my hauntings. Operation Become a Human, proceeding as planned. Good God, what an asshole this guy is. When the first movie did this speed-up trick, we saw some pretty f***ed up stuff. Like Katie just standing and watching Mika for five hours or something like that. Here, it's just sped up footage. Like the director is satisfying our subconscious need to fast-forward this sh**. <laughs> Dog is struggling with something basically off-camera that is surely getting picked up by another camera. But hey, whoever found this footage decided to turn it into a horror movie rather than a documentary and went with a less is more adage. Curious girl who's been waking up to investigate noises only wakes up when the dog attack is long over. Dad and daughter play right into the demon's hands by taking the dog to the late night emergency vet clinic and leaving mom and baby home alone for optimal torturing. This woman, who knows her house is haunted, has left her baby alone for nearly an hour. <laughs> eh, just ignore it. Movie captures amazing footage of what it's like to be locked in the basement with a demon for over an hour. Oh.
Whatever happened after Christy came around the corner like someone demon-possessed was not important enough to put in this movie. <laughs> this child is crying because his mother did a full reenactment of the Blair Witch Project. Amazingly, he was able to get through 20 minutes of Christy pretending to be all three characters during the map arguing scene. Dad is pacing back and forth, trying to figure out how to blame the wind for this. Sure, olive oil on a cross. It probably won't work, but not with that attitude it won't. Well, thank God the housekeeper is super well-versed in evil spirits and shit. She's like a convenience keeper. Movie wants me to feel some kind of conflicted about this decision to pass the demon from Christy to her sister, thus creating the first movie. And honestly, I can't fault them. If my Hispanic housekeeper rubbed something in some olive oil and said this was my only option, I'd definitely sell out the sister in a heartbeat. I mean, right? So, could this demon just not have already taken the kid by now? Or did it have to wait all the way to this very moment to finally make its move? I feel like Demon Christy should already be on the road by now with the kid to wherever firstborn sons go to be collected by demons. Pawn shop? I'm guessing pawn shop. Demon stashed the kid in the basement for safekeeping, I guess. Now the dad is filming this shit. why? You're gonna tell me so that he can see through the camera's night vision, to which I'm gonna respond, 89% of average American homes have 2.3 flashlights on hand. I understand that they're passing the demon on to Katie, but why do they think that the demon will stop wanting the kid? Allie already researched this, and it's pretty clear what it wants. So this is like the robbing Peter to pay Paul of demon management. I feel like there's stuff going on in our house. You probably should just ignore it. Paranormal activity too? Meet paranormal activity. I know, it's a weird time warp we're going through here, where the two comes before the one. It then took demon-possessed Katie an entire day to travel from San Diego to Carlsbad. I'm guessing she went to Solana Beach to soak up the sun and tell everyone to lighten up. Then she went to go steal a kid. You want to get your coffee from a place that knows coffee better than anyone else. At Dunkin' Donuts, you can do it. Movie's product placements include actual advertisements, including two for Dunkin' Donuts. Wait, did she come all the way here in a blood-soaked shirt? The distance between San Diego and Carlsbad is about 35 miles. There's some extremely unobservant people between those cities. Katie will now waste 30 seconds of time, while the series of security monitors updates us on the status of the staircase, nursery, front door, pool, and Daniel's neck. The kid survives this. So let me ask you something, movie. If in the first paranormal activity you knew Mika's body was found on October 11th, how did you not know about Katie's further excursion to snap up her sister's firstborn? Did someone have to give you found footage before you connected the dots? I'm just giving you a shit movie. I know you didn't have any clue what would happen in Paranormal Activity 2 when you did the first one. Let me release the Kraken. You choo choo choose me? I f dead. Who knows what evil? lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Leave me alone! Never alone! <laughs> Ow, liver, liver, liver. It was a joke. The power of Christ! Ha 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 